Now, building station wagons or estates out of hatchbacks is quite a common phenomenon. Remember the Tata Indigo Marina or the Skoda Fabia combi that never came to India? Now, Datsun has done something similar to the Go and they're calling it the Go Plus. But they've already filled up that extra cargo space with two seats. These seats are good enough only for two really small kids. In fact, Datsun agrees on that too and says that the seats are designed for kids up to 10 years of age. Fold these down and you have 347 litres of boot space. Foldable is good, but removable seats would have earned Overdrive's vote. But then again, this car is built to a cost, just like the Go. And so you have the same cabin elements as the hatchback. Everything from the phone holder and the USB charger to the umbrella type handbrake and the old school seat belts. A little more kit than the hatchback would have been a welcome change. The exterior design is similar up to the rear door and wheel. Beyond them is the extended bodywork that transforms the hatchback into a wagon. The Go Plus retains the Go's tail lights and so there is a wide gap between them and the MPV's steeper boot lid. The split shoulder line on the side profile looks good and we have always liked the Go's contemporary face. Surprisingly, the design comes together rather well. Despite the sub 4 meter length and the tall height of the car, the Go Plus manages to look quite balanced. Save for those skinny tyres, of course. When we drove the Go hatchback, we were pretty impressed with the 1.2 litre petrol engine. It always felt more than enough when you compare it to the Altos and the Eons of the world. The same engine does duty in the Go Plus as well. Now the ECU has obviously been retuned to take care of the extra weight and the size of this car but that hasn't taken away the eagerness of the GO package. Despite the longer size and that extra weight, this car still feels as eager and that's a very good thing. The engine remains equally fuel efficient as well. While the GO hatchback managed to give us a fuel economy of 18.4 km to a litre, the GO Plus was good for 16.5 km to a litre overall. Should you care? The Go Plus made its not to 100 sprint in 13.9 seconds. One complaint that we had with the Go hatchback was the sound insulation. That continues with the Go Plus as well. Now the mechanicals aren't noisy per se. But then because the sound insulation is so bad, you can hear practically everything that's going on under the hood and also everything that is coming between the tyre and the road. So every pebble that it's throwing up at the wheel arches, you can hear it inside. One problem that you generally encounter with MPVs is that when they're not running a full house, they tend to feel a little bouncy even on the slightest bit of undulations. That isn't the case with the Go Plus. Because this car sits quite low and because this is more of an estate version of a hatchback, it doesn't feel as bouncy when you're driving over potholes or even on sharper bumps. The ride quality is quite good. But when you start pushing the car around bends, that is when you notice that there's a lot of body roll. The suspension has been tweaked up to accommodate the rear overhang, but you never get the feeling of dragging a tail around. The Go Plus feels quite car-like to drive. Add to it the fact that the tyres are quite skinny and it starts feeling skittish around bends as well. At the end of the day, this is not a car that's meant to be pushed around bends, it's meant to carry people. And that job, it will do pretty well. Now, one of the things that I don't like in the Go Plus are the rear view mirrors. Now, like the Go hatchback, even these mirrors can't be adjusted from the inside. And the inside rear view mirror, it seems to have a concave surface to it to make sure that I can see the entire length behind me and of course outside the window as well. Now it has worked to an extent, but it is a little deceptive and at night if you keep looking at that mirror every now and then, you might just end up feeling a little groggy. Though it is less than 4 meters in length, we recommend installing a set of reversing sensors on the Go Plus since the mirrors don't quite help in judging its length. We would have loved to see ABS and airbags as well, more so after the controversy that the Go has gotten involved in with the global NCAP. Datsun assures that they're working towards making these two cars safer, 
but that's still some time away. Now, if you're the kind who believe that adding racing stripes to your car adds more horsepower to its engine or pasting a scoop on the bonnet makes the vehicle more aerodynamic, then you may not have a hard time believing that this car is actually an MPV. In my point of view, this is just a plus-sized go with enough room for five people and their weekend's worth of luggage. If you ask me, Datsun has delivered on their promise of giving you a spacious car in under 4 lakh rupees. Maybe a good alternative to a compact sedan. But if you're looking for a proper seven-seater, you may want to look elsewhere.